All right, guys, double bass is back. I think we're going to start doing these every week. The, the feedback and the amount of uh, suggestions I get has been just incredible. So today, we have a hell of a double bass episode. Two barrel proof, high age beast go head to head. This was a great idea from a viewer. ECBP, a large quick barrel proof, A123 versus Lucky 7 proprietor 15 year. Which one wins out blind? Stay here. It's the Mash and Drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C and welcome back to the Mash and Drum. Like, subscribe, do all the things to help grow the channel for 2023. Thank you so much, Whiskey Tube family. Now, if you have any suggestions for some head-to-head -head matchups on any upcoming double bass episode, I'm gonna need these uh, more and more, so I'd really appreciate it. Make sure you leave them below in the comments. Let's learn a little bit more about today's matchup. First, we have the highly touted Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Bourbon Batch A123, which kicked off the 11th year for the brand this year in 2023. It's also the 31st batch. Also coming in at the highest proof the brand has seen since the 2020 releases. This one is bottled at 125.6 proof, mash bill of 78% corn, 12% malted barley, 10% rye. This one is the last of the 12 year age stated bottles, at least for now, and its price, MSRP is 70 bucks. Its matchup is Lucky 7 Proprietor 15 Year. Now, Lucky 7 was co founded by Michael Lalila and John Pals. They were both into bourbon and cinema, and the Lucky 7 name was founded from the infamous Stage 7 in Hollywood, California, where some of the greatest movies in cinema history were filmed. Now, the 15 Year Proprietor is sourced from an unknown location. It's a single barrel offering. This one comes in at 130.9 proof and retails for about 150 bucks. So if this is your first episode of Double Bass, basically what I do is I taste through each one, I rate them on nose, palate, and finish, and see which one wins out. Uh, a lot of people also ask me why to use the black uh, Glen Cairns. Uh, it's basically so I can't see the color of the whiskey. Sometimes whiskeys, even though they're the same age, some can be a little bit lighter, some can be a little bit darker. I don't want that to, you know, tell me exactly what's in the glass. So I use uh, the Batman Glen Cairns, so I don't know what's in the glass. And here we go. We'll call this one A, we'll call this one B. Let's go to A, here we go. This is deep, rich cherry chocolate. A lot of good oak here. There's definitely some rye spice in here too, picking up a little bit of a savory note. You know, as far as the matchup goes, a lot of people ask me, you know, when it comes to the proprietor, where is it coming from? Uh, you know, where is this high age stuff being sourced since it's an undisclosed location? I mean, really, in today's market, you're thinking about three different distillers that could be providing such high age uh, bourbon to sourcing brands, which is most likely either Barton, Heaven Hill, or Jim Beam. It's got to be one of those three. It's certainly not coming from MGP because MGP's high age stuff is just it's not out there anymore unless it's being released by MGP. All right, the nose on A is fantastic. Let's go to B. Oh, much different. Oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> so this one has more citrus to it, which I like, but like a uh, like charred citrus. A little bit of smoke character here too, which I think plays into that. I could argue maybe a little bit of dark fruit here too. I'm not sure if it's cherry. Man, when you compare, Man, A is just dark. B is a little bit brighter, not as dark, and I don't think it's as bold. I mean, both really good noses. I'm gonna have to give the nod to A on the nose. All right, palate time, here we go, let's try it. Oh my God. A is so ridiculously good. I mean, both of these are going to be really good. It's, I think this is why, you know, some folks voted for this matchup. There is a, such a burst of just flavor and sweetness on, on letter A, just attacking the palate. So delicious. Great finish. Both of these are high proof. So that's going to bring a lot of flavor to the finish here. We'll talk about finish. We'll grade that as, you know, once we get into a few sips. But as far as palate goes, this one is just, uh, it's killing it already. Really good sweetness, just just such a great mouth coating on this one too. Mm. 
It's got all the brown sugars, again, a little bit of chocolate. I'm almost getting like a, not even a cherry. I think this is like kind of going raspberry for me a little bit, which is interesting. Man, that is an absolute flavor monster. Yeah, that, that just, I mean, it's creme brulee. It finishes off like a creme brulee in a glass. That is delicious. Okay. Letter A is uh, making it tough. All right, let's go to B. Just smell it again. Man, B seems to be getting better. I still like the nose over, over uh, I still like the nose of A over B, but let's try it on the palate. Here we go. Yeah, this is going to be rough. <laughs> B is fantastic as well. Now, I think, well, I just came off the sip for A. Let me go for another sip for B here. Wow. B has a little bit more of an oak type of um, resonance. The oak stays, there is the sweet. It's very well balanced. Again, both of these. I think A has a little bit more of an elevated flavor punch overall, but B has got this really nice finish to it as well. Um, but the flavors in B, I think are a little bit more oak forward rather than sweet, whereas A is a little bit sweet more than oak. But they both obviously carry some uh, some heavy, not heavy, but good solid oak flavors with the ages that we're working with here. You know, one being a minimum of 12 and the other one being 15, a 15 year single barrel. I don't know which one I like better. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> oh man. Both of these are so good. I'm gonna have to take one more sip of each here. A is actually, I'm getting the oak more coming off of this one. Now let's go to, let's go to this one. Letter B. Man, I'm really digging the, the palette on B. I don't know. <laughs> this is the fun of doing these blind. Um, I, uh, damn it. I gotta pick one here, guys, sorry. Uh, I think part of me is leaning A just because of that raspberry note. That's pretty unique and I really like it. Um, man, you know what though? I think the finish already, the finish is probably going to go to letter B here. So the finish on B goes on for days. But A, one nose and just marginally one palette for me here. Uh, I'm going to give the nod to the finish on B here because B is just... Beast finish goes on for days. So technically the winner goes to A. Let's see who won out. <laughs> That's kind of an upset right there. <laughs> it goes to Lucky Seven. This Lucky Seven 15 year proprietor killed it. Absolutely killed it. I mean, it was this close, but my goodness. The flavors on this thing was where it was incredible. And then you compare it to the Logitech Barrel Proof. Just making sure. Yep. Logitech Barrel Proof A123. Even though this is an absolute beast of a bottle. This is my second bottle of a Logitech A123. So um, I don't know if it just needed to open up more or something, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. This easily won the finish, which I think is why I love A123 so much. But man, both of these are just so freaking good. Lucky seven proprietor, 15 year, comes in and takes it from probably my favorite, maybe your favorite watching, Elijah Craig A123, crazy. All right guys, I well, hope you enjoyed this episode of Double Bass as we put Lucky seven, 15, the proprietor versus Elijah Craig A123, the last of the 12 year age statement, as I said, for now. It could come back. Heaven Hill does a lot of stuff with their labels, so we'll see what happens over time. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you have the ad, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Remember to leave your suggestions for future Double Bass episodes down in the comments. And before we go, as always, again, if it's your first Double Bass episode, what I always do is blend them at the end and come up with a fun name. So this is Lucky7 and Elijah Craig. I mean, what do we call this? 
Um, we can't say Elijah Craig 7, because then I'll think it's like a 7 year. We'll call it, uh, we'll call it the Lucky Elijah. It's the Lucky Elijah. The Lucky Elijah blend. Let's see how this one comes out, guys. Let me swirl that around for a little bit. Give it the old swirl job. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when you blend high-aged bourbons together, it doesn't always work. This one on the nose isn't bad. But I feel like the oak is definitely taking over with the two of them together. Let's try it. You know what, Lucky Elijah started out good, but it gives this really oaky, a, a little bit of a bitter aftertaste. I feel like if I can play with the proportions of this, that and that could end up being a really good blend. But whatever I had left in the glasses was not working. <laughs> so with that, as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. Cheers, see you guys next time on Mash and Drum.